Hey, good afternoon everybody. This is John from Volkswagen Planet coming to you from Tampa, Florida on January 3rd, 2020. It is currently 84 degrees out. That's right, 84 degrees. And we are still working on the 1972 Super Beetle. Um, for those of you who have been following us, we all know that this thing, we got this car to fire up back in early November and has been plagued with starting problems, idling problems, and a few other problems. So since then, we have rebuilt the carb and um, really just, it's just been fine tuning it from here from that point on. And uh, it's just what we've narrowed it down to is the choke which is going to be on this side of the carb. And this right here is what what we really seem to be having the problems with. Um, I still am f fine tuning it and I think I got it pretty close, but I'm not 100% sure. It's just going to be backing off these three screws here, one, two, and there's one up there and moving the choke to the clockwise position to uh, um, adjust it for the cold start for the choke. Now, one thing that I did not know until it was uh, pointed out to me today was when you go over, and for those of you who don't know much about carburetors, I thought that this, um, I don't know what, what this thing is called, but I thought it constantly had to ride on this collar and this, uh, what was told me now is the cam, and this only is supposed to be hitting that when the car first starts up and uses the choke. So that right there was a um, learning experience for me. I did not know about this situation here. I was explaining how, how we get the tensioner, tighten this up on the choke itself. So let me show you right now what it's doing as I start the car up right now. I'm going to give it a quick uh, gas. Give a quick two uh, little cranks or two uh, uh, depression uh, to depress the gas pedal. That's just simulating that right there, real quick. So let me go turn on the ignition real quick. All right. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on to the on position. We hear the click, and then all of a sudden. So as you guys can tell by just by watching it run, it does um, seem to be working a lot better. And for those of you who are having this problem, check your electric choke um, connector. Mine was really sloppy. And if you use these kind of uh, end connectors, seems to be just about like a um, one-time use. Because uh, just as soon as you try to use it a second time or make any kind of modifications, you got to replace that end. It just seems to be junk. So... If you notice the uh, fan belt was jumping around, it still has a little slight miss. I decided that it's no sense trying to go any further on this until I put the J pipes and a muffler and exhaust system on this. And also too, to get the right uh, oil bath assembly or to put the uh, hose on the air filter to the um, oil, was that oil bath, whatever the uh, oil filler tube, I'm sorry. So there's no sense really going any further because these right, this right here is causing major uh, vacuum leaks. So there's no sense really going any further. And that's where we stand right now. 
and uh, really seems to be the uh, that really seemed to solve the problem. So let's see if this thing's still going to work in a couple days. As of right about three weeks now, the hard start's still working. As you can tell, this is still firing up really nice, really quick, really responsive. Of course, not now. Let me press the gas real quick. If you notice, I still got the lights on. I think that's a grounding problem. If you think it's something else, comment below. I'd like to know because it's actually doing the reverse. When you turn the ignition on, you see you got the brake warning light comes on, but we don't get the um, oil or the generator. Now I did test the um, alternator, getting 14.40 volts coming out. So we are getting a charge. So they're reversed somehow. And what I mean by re reverse is when the when you turn the key on, those lights should come on. And when the car finally cranks over, they come on and they stay on. So I still got to work a couple little bugs of that out. But um, for the most part, you can see that we did uh, get the choke. I, I would say the choke is about 90, 95% correct. Uh, he, my friend did adjust the uh, idle fuel mixture a little bit just to keep the, the idle uh, down. But his, um, his uh, I guess you could say, diagnosis going forward is he doesn't really want to play much with this because it has no exhaust system. And that's, that's not a, that will cause back pressure. So we need to get an exhaust system on it and to uh, button up the, uh, what do you call that? the uh, the vacuum leak so I'm gonna get a piece of hose I'm gonna put from the the oil filler to the bottom of the carburetor hopefully it'll smooth this out a little bit I'm still gonna look at how to adjust the belt comment below if you think this belt's still good or once they start wobbling like that should they be replaced um, I'm pretty sure it just needs a couple shims up here it probably straighten that right out do have the oil uh, crank a crank oil seal going bad and the oil tube um, oil cooler seals those little donuts are going bad also so I don't want to run it too much like this it's probably not healthy for the car to run like that but that's where we stand this is the first day I've really had a chance to work on this car so comment below if you think I'm on the right track comment below if I'm not on the right track and uh, we'll catch you on the next video, guys. Stay safe, stay warm, and have a great day.